Hello girls, gays, and non-binary babes. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking about all of the books that I read in October. So October for me is always a spooky month. I always read pretty much solely spooky books during October and this was no different. I have only read one book that could not be considered spooky. So if you don't like spooky horror books then sorry but I really enjoyed myself. We had some really great books. We had at least one really awful one and yeah I'm really excited to talk about them so I hope you enjoy and let's get into the video. So the first book that I have here is The Deep by Nick Cutter. This is a horror that follows um, a man who is living in this futuristic, not futuristic world, but kind of a world like in the future a little bit where there is this plague going around, the, like the apocalypse is basically happening and his brother is on the submarine trying to find a cure for this disease and he goes down to see his brother and kind of discovers what's happening in the deep and I really liked this the only thing like <laughs> I think it was really good and really weird and creepy but I did expect a lot more from it like I wanted more creepiness I guess from it more horror and especially compared to Nick Cutter's other book The Troop it just fell a little short for me so yeah I still really liked it though I just wish it was a little more horror horror-y? I don't know. <laughs> the next book that I read was Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier and this if you didn't know is a classic kind of it's a more recent one um, but it is set in I believe like the 1940s no maybe yeah that sounds about right um, but the new Netflix movie adaptation came out for it and I really wanted to watch that because I love Lily James so I picked this up and I absolutely loved it. It is a new favorite of mine. It was so gothic and mysterious and interesting and I just had so much fun with it. It's a romance with a dark twist kind of like Jane Eyre so if you like that or like that story then you'll like this one as well. Um, it was just so much fun and I could not put it down but I will definitely be reading this every year for spooky season at the very least. Oh it's just so dark and mysterious. I, I loved it. The next book has a little bit of backstory behind it and that is The Ritual by Adam Neville. So this book I didn't know was a book at first. I wanted to watch the movie but then I saw that the movie was based on a book so I'm like okay stop the movie we're, we're gonna read the book first. And so I borrowed the book from my library and I got 10 pages in and I'm like I can't do this I can't read this so I <laughs> I DNF'd it for the time being and watched the movie and the movie ended up being one of my new favorites so I'm like okay let me try the book again so my main issue with the book was that it felt very 2000s white guy writing like it just felt like like there was like undertones of sexism fat phobia just stuff like that where it's like yeah this was written in a dude in the 2000s but other than that it was a great book I don't know how I feel about the ending but I'm that way with most horror books so I did end up giving it three stars but I think the movie might have been better just because I liked the monster in the movie and it was just so well done and designed so yeah overall a good book if you can get past the 2000s white dude horror writing. <laughs> Next up we have another book that I borrowed from the library and that is Piranesi by Susanna Clark and this I went into anticipating a mythology retelling and it definitely feels like it but I don't think it is. I think Piranesi is a character from mythology and the main character in the book just gets that nickname so it's not like a retelling or anything but I did really like this I gave it four stars 
I thought it was weird and fun and the plot twist was incredible um, but I just was expecting a little bit more from it so yeah that's why I couldn't give it the full five but I did really like this one. It's about this man who his whole life all he has known is these halls and rooms in this giant giant almost castle like structure and every once in a while these hallways flood and he kind of knows this place like the back of his hand. One day he discovers that all is not as it seems. So I did really like this one like I said and I ended up giving it four stars. Next up we have another classic and that is The Hound of the Baskervilles by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle and this is a part of the Sherlock Holmes series. I don't know if it's a series or just like a world but um, this is the first one I have read and I may just pick up more honestly. Um, I didn't think I would like Sherlock Holmes books and I didn't know this was a Sherlock Holmes book until I read the first chapter so yeah I don't even think it says anything um, I mean it says on the back but I don't think I read the back before reading it but this is about a curse on this piece of land and there is rumored to be a giant hound living on the land and killing people or killing members of this family like through generations and Sherlock Holmes is on the case he's going to figure out what's going on and I really like that this one definitely felt like it had a paranormal ending it wasn't like a full paranormal ending but I liked that it wasn't just explained away I mean it kind of was but it was kind of like in the middle I don't know um, but I thought it was really creepy and I love a good giant dog so yeah um, the only thing I didn't like about this was the very last chapter where it kind of was an info dump of a wrap-up of the events that happened. I didn't like that. I thought it was just a lot put into one chapter and we could have done without it. But I really liked this one and ended up giving it a 4.5 stars only missing a 4 a 0.5 star rating because of that last chapter unfortunately. But I did really like this one. Next up is the one book that was not spooky this month and it was a new release that came out so I obviously had to read it, one of my favorite series, and that would be When Night Breaks by Janella Angelis. So this is the sequel to Where Dreams Descend, and if you've been watching my channel, you know I adored that book. The romance was just perfect, the plot was so interesting, and the magic was really fun, and I loved it. And of course this one is the sequel, so I thought this was incredible. I gave it five stars. It was the perfect sequel, the perfect ending to the story, and I'm just gonna miss the characters so much. I got so attached to them even though it was only two books and I'm just really really gonna miss them and I don't know what I'm gonna do with myself. Where Dreams Descend is a Moulin Rouge slash um I can't remember. I think it's like a Moulin Rouge retelling. Um, but there's magic and a magic competition and romance and mystery and I love it. So you need to pick it up. This one was phenomenal as well. So yeah. So next up I read The Collector by John Fowles. This is an older horror novel following a man who stalks this woman and eventually ends up kidnapping her and it is the story of that and then halfway through it switches to the point of view of the girl he kidnapped and her experience through her diaries. So this I really liked. I did give it four stars. So my one issue with it was that when I picked it up I had heard a lot about it and that it was very disturbing, very dark, very twisted and I've read a lot of dark and twisted stuff and this was not as dark as I thought it was going to be. Obviously it's about a man who kidnaps a woman so it's dark. And I don't want anybody to think like I'm saying like if you get kidnapped and the guy is nice to you it's not a big deal but like 
it just was it was a tamer version of what I was expecting um and it is dark it is twisted but it's just not what I thought it was going to be so yeah don't get the wrong impression here um this is just for storytelling purposes only is I wanted it darker but yeah that was that was my one issue with that I don't have a whole lot to say on this though it was very interesting I did like the point of view change I thought that was neat um but yeah next up we have Wonderland by Zoji Zo Zoji Zoj Stage and this is one I've been wanting to read for a while but I wanted to save it for spooky season and I finally read it and I really liked it I gave this one four stars as well and I liked the mundaneness of it at least in the first half the first three quarters um, I really liked that um, the plot follows this family who is moving to upstate New York from New York City and the changes that they're experiencing and the not so um, mundane experiences that they end up experiencing so there's some paranormal stuff going on um, just a lot of weird things happening and I really liked how the characters felt really real and I didn't want to put the book down I was just so immersed in it and the storytelling was really great and all of that but I do highly recommend this book if you like paranormal stuff next up we have a book that was sent to me by Savvy from Savvy Reads Books on Twitter thank you so much for sending me they sent me like five books y'all and this is the first one I picked up because it sounded so weird and that is To Be Devoured by Sarah Tantlinger. This was as weird as I thought it was going to be. Um, I don't really know how to explain what this is about. Um, it's very very short. It only follows like a short period of time in this woman's life and she is intrigued by these vultures that she sees near her house and she's living with her girlfriend and seeing her therapist and she's having like these blackout anger problems and it's really fucking weird it's really weird there's a lot of body horror and gore and really dark stuff in here um so just know that it's just so weird i really the plot twist crying and throwing up over the plot twist let me tell you what um but yeah just know what you're getting into before you read this one because it's dark and twisted this is what i was expecting the collector to be it's dark and twisted and i don't think i'll ever be the same i did give this one four out of five stars by the way now we're going to talk about my least favorite book of the month and my least favorite book in quite a while and that is the house at a house at the bottom of a lake I can never yeah it's a house at the bottom of a lake by Josh Mallerman Josh Mallerman wrote bird box I read that I quite liked it so I decided to pick up another one this audiobook was four hours long so I was like oh you know can't can't go wrong with that house at the bottom of a lake sounds creepy enough this was not creepy like at all there were a couple points where I was like oh weird but overall I was just so like it was just so cringy and so stupid and I hated it I gave it one star um my main gripe was the two main characters I did not like them I did not like their romance I thought it was insta lovey and really cringy and yeah I hated it it made me uncomfortable and I don't think there was anything like inherently like problematic about it I just hated it and I thought it was way too rushed like the whole story was way too rushed and it was stupid and I didn't like it so one star and I don't want to talk about this book anymore <laughs> but anyway the next book that I read was The Truants this is by Kate Weinberg so I gave this one five stars I literally read this book in a single day I could not put it down I couldn't put it down it was so good and so intriguing and fascinating and weird I just loved it I just I really loved it so this one is a dark academia and it follows a girl 
who is really obsessed with this new professor at her school who is a well-known author and is teaching a couple classes on Agatha Christie books. I, I'm just gonna leave it at that. I think Dark Academia really says it all. It's dark and academic and I loved it. I love a good Dark Academia so what else can I say? Um, yeah, I don't have a whole lot to say on this, just that I literally read it in a day, so I think that says a lot. <laughs> Next up, we have a nonfiction book, and that is The Ice Pick Surgeon by Sam Keen. Um, this is about murder, fraud, sabotage, piracy, and other disastrous, dastardly deeds perpetrated in the name of science. So, I picked this one up because I'm very intrigued by real life horror stories especially if it has to do with like science and like an academic field so like archaeology science marine biology I love all that stuff and this was really really good I don't rate nonfiction books at least like this because they're just giving you the information it's like was this? I can only say if it was good or bad really at least for me so this one was really good and I really liked it and it was very interesting. Some of the stories I have heard about before, but it kind of it went into it went in depth into each story, but not too much where you got bored and were like, okay, let's move on. Um, it gave you like just enough of each story to satisfy you, and I really liked that aspect. Um, but yeah, if you're interested in like medical horror and stuff like that, then I would suggest that one. We've got two books left. And the next one is, once again, another classic, and that is The Woman in White by Wilkie Collins. This is a fat book, and I read this, I can't believe I finished this in October, honestly, because it was so long. But it was really easy to read, honestly, and the story was really intriguing throughout. It did kind of drag in a couple parts, but overall, like, it kept me entertained through eight or 800, 600 pages. Um, I did give this three out of five stars. I really liked it. Honestly, my main issue was just that it was really fucking long, and I don't really think it needed to be. Um, it was definitely intriguing from, like, um, a writing standpoint. It does have multiple point of views, and it is told in each individual person's story of what happened in this situation and it follows like one long timeline. So it was definitely interesting from a writing perspective. So this is about a man who is um, walking, I think he was walking like along the highway or something one night and he sees a woman in all white, it's like two in the morning and he's like what the fuck are you doing here? And he ends up figuring out this mystery very intriguing but very long so if you don't like long books then maybe don't pick this one up because honestly it's it yeah it eh. <laughs> and the final book that i read this month was you deserve nothing by alexander maxick so this is a very fascinating story and it follows this man who is a teacher at this international school in france in paris and in the beginning of the book, he is this well-loved, adored teacher. He's an English teacher. Most English teachers are like hit or miss, but he's like one of those really good ones that you adore and everybody really likes. And so there's that. By the end of the book, he is hated and despised, among other things. Um, he ends up getting into a relationship with a student so yeah just know that before you go into it i do think this was really really thought provoking i think i did give it five stars and overall i just really liked the take on morality and also how you're perceived by others versus your mor morality so yeah i just think it was really thought provoking and it was just it was just interesting so yeah i did give it five stars and I really liked it. So yeah, another dark academia for you. And that is going to do it for all the books that I read in October. 
I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know if you read any spooky books in October, like what your favorite one was, because I'm always looking for recommendations. But yeah, thank you so, so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye!